Hello and welcome back. Uh, forgive me if I sound a little stuffed up. My, I'm getting over a cold. So, anyway, in this video, I want to talk about a lot of what we see nowadays, especially among uh, many people who are quote unquote red pill or uh, of the manosphere. You hear a lot of talk about women and that women don't accept accountability. You know, there are a lot of channels that kind of showcase this sort of concept that, you know, women are just kind of oblivious to consequences or a, a woman's kryptonite, you know, is accountability. But the reality is, is where does that come from? Women adapt to the environment that you put them in. So if you have a very religious society, let's say like Islam or Jewish culture, or Mormons, etc. The people that live in that society adapt to that society. Those societal standards are held by men. Because women by nature cannot get the world to conform to their ideology. Because they don't have the physical ability to enforce said rules. And so this is why women naturally adapt to the society that men create around them. So if you create a very religious society, well then the women would naturally will adapt, even though they might not want to, but because they lack the ability and the power to make adjustments, and this is why typically women use manipulation, right? They talk to you very sweet and see that, you know, and nicely, they dress in a certain way that is very uh, accommodating towards men and they use manipulation to get the things that they want whereas men can go out and physically change the world and physically build the world that they want and women have to basically do what they must right there's that saying the strong do what they will and the weak do what they must and that's basically women now in the early you know, we can go further back into into the earlier 1900s but in the 1960s you had as religion in the country was slowly dying, it came to a peak in what is commonly referred to as the God is Dead movement, where this was started, you know, in the late eighteen uh, in the late eighteen hundreds by Nietzsche, and that as time had moved by and we became very sophisticated, we didn't need all of this concept of God and morality, and that you know there's this higher power that basically is the one that sets the laws for us right and this basically goes back to what god had said in the beginning uh to adam when he had punished adam and he had said look man has become like us knowing good and bad meaning that man has taken a role similar to god to decide for themselves what was good versus what was bad prior to that god was the one who in essence told Adam and Eve, what was good and what was bad, and that was made evident by the tree of knowledge of good and bad, and that man was restricted from taking, eating from the fruit in the middle of the garden. All the other trees you were allowed to eat, but God said, the one in the middle, you are not to eat from it. And so that represented the covenant, that as long as you were obedient and didn't touch that that tree and eat from that tree, then you continue to live under the world that God was going to create for them. And so in any event, with the God is dead movement that continued to creep through into America into the from the late 1800s, well up into the 1900s, was basically pushing theology, pushing religion out of people's homes. And again, men eventually moved away from religion and what you got in the 1960s this is why you this is why they talk often about 1960s and how um this is where marriages started to collapse after this and you got singlehood and single mothers etc just basically skyrockets just go, just basically goes up exponentially and this takes place around the 1960s what also took place around the 1960s was well excuse me around 1970s or like like late 69 which is the free love free sex movement and this was pushed 
in the 1960s as a way for people to kind of throw off the shackles of religion and having a more liberal mindset. And again, this began in the late 1800s, but really started to gain a lot of movement after the God is Dead movement of the 18 of the 1960s. And so people became more accepting of gay rights, liberalism, open marriages, polyamory, etc. They just opened the floodgates for degeneracy. And a lot of this takes place in the 19 in the 1960s to the 1970s. And this is the baby boomer generation, right? This is late baby boomer generation cuz baby boomers is like from 45, 44 all the way up into like 60 something. So many of the baby boomers at their time are in their 20s. They're in their 20s, maybe early 30s around there. Especially if you were born in like the, the 50s, by the time the 70s rolled around, you know, like I said, you were in your 20s. And so they were enjoying this part of their life. And of course, this is where you got things like Woodstock. And of course, these people then turn around and look at the generation of today and they sit here and talk about how oh, everything is sexualized. And it's like, well, a lot of this got started when you were a young person. And you enjoyed it. You were, you loved going to Woodstock and women flashing their titties. This was your generation. This is where a lot of this stuff got started and got underway. And primarily, this is, of course, is the fault of men. And around this exact same time period is where no-fault divorce came around. No-fault no fault divorce came around in... 1969, right? Again, right after the God is Dead movement, right going into the free love and free sex movement was where um, the history of no-fault divorce, of course, in California, began, 1969. Now, prior to this, it is not to say that men were moral. They may have been morally more inclined, going to church, etc., but what was very common at that time in the early 1900s, which is what led to a lot of this, was you had married men who were committing adultery. And at that time, there was no no fault. You had to find fault and you had to prove fault, meaning that either the person had to be abusing you, you had to be able to prove it. The person had to be committing adultery or committing fornication, and the woman had to pro prove it. And at that time, their divorce and lawyers were not free. So women didn't work. So for women to be able to prove, hey, my husband is being immoral, he's sleeping with other women, I know he's sleeping with other women, it was difficult for them to prove it. And so this is why you see the depiction here in the picture where the lawyers and then the judge is basically holding the reins of keeping an uh, unhappy marriage, right? You can see it might be a little bit hard here, but there's like a little writing here under this lock and key with this chain, and it says unhappy marriage. And many women were unhappy because they were being cheated on. And men were abandoning women or creating families with younger women and then leaving these, other, leaving these women destitute. And so this is where no fault came around. No fault came around as a result of men's behavior because men abused the court system and was like well bitch you can't you can't prove that i'm cheating so you stuck with me and so men used the court system to in essence put chains and to keep women in marriages where they weren't happy and of course you don't hear a lot of this stuff you know when you hear typically about no fault for no fault now you hear about it from the standpoint of oh it's terrible for men uh, women abusing it and it's like but you never hear about the history of where no fault came from and it's as a result of men's behavior towards women and of course a lot of this revolves around and this is why you hear a lot of well who was it what, you know a lot of people may have heard of it from kevin samuels where he had talked about uh, oh high value men we're not cheating we're just exercising options uh, yeah sure i agree mm -hmm. i agree and it's I a personal decision i've never cheated i've never cheated but it's a personal decision. But I can also yeah. say, um, I still remain the I still remain available to exercise that option. Yeah. And anybody I deal with knows that. Right. I mean, honestly, Kimberly, if he's not bringing it home, no outside kids, no outside babies, no diseases, you ain't gonna find out about it. Ain't embarrassing. Why does it matter? 
because it's the idea. And I think- How do you know if you don't know? Even if you don't know, I think that someone still loses in the end. Yeah. You gonna, you know what you're going to lose? A husband. And you hear this a lot with, you know, Fresh and Fit and many other red pillars. They parrot this same sort of mentality that it's okay for men to cheat. Well, you're naturally, if you're a, a high value male, well, then it's okay for you to cheat because you're uh, limited in supply. And so you can't... Uh, just expect to be faithful. Now, of course, all of this flies in the face of what the Bible says about marriage and to keep the marriage bed without defilement and that men were not allowed to go out there and accumulate wives for themselves. And, of course, people talk about this. You even hear, what's his name? Uh, I did a video talking about this a while ago where uh, Rolo Tomasi had said, oh, you know, polygamy was normal in biblical times for all you Christians out there and Father Abraham. And that's like, no, it wasn't. It talks about it. It talks about it culturally, but it never says that the gut, the Bible was okay with it. That is why Jesus, when he was alive, he reiterated to those who were alive in his time that asked him about, about marriage. And he said, this is why a man will leave his father and mother and will stick to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Going back to what God had stated originally, when he was the when he originated the concept of joining men and women together this is why jesus could later say what god has joked together let no man put apart but men's attitudes towards religion because they were acting in a as a as authoritarians were abusing women in this institution and so women were very were negatively minded towards this because in essence it trapped them in marriages where men could exercise options and there was no it was just hypocrisy it was just hypocrisy and this is this is the the climate where what we live in today the the degeneracy that we live in today is brought on by the men that came behind us and this is why i say when you look at why people, when you look at why women are not held accountable, it's because men aren't held accountable. Men don't want to be held accountable. So naturally, they're not going to want to hold women accountable because then women will recognize the hypocrisy. And this is why you hear a lot of women um, talk about in videos, well, what are, what are you looking for? Man? I'm looking for a man to be faithful because they're not. They're, they're degenerate. And of course, as time has moved by and men have lives in essence have improved they've left the need for having a wife and the responsibility that comes with being married because prior to that you had to be willing to have children you had to be willing to provide you had to be a good husband you were expected to be the moral head of the of the household and at that time most of these individuals were christian so you were responsible for leading your household Nowadays, men don't want to do any of that shit. Nowadays, men just want to go out there. And I'll showcase this in, in another video after this one airs, talking about this, where men, wh why do you see a plethora of things like OnlyFans and just basically, in a, at the end of the day, prostitution? Because the men have left providing for women. And so people look at it from the standpoint of today. Like if you're a young person... You're looking at the scene of the world through what you know of today, being oblivious to what had happened prior to your arrival. And of course, nowadays, men being very limited in their scope and looking back at history, they say, well, you know, it's all women's fault. You know, you know why is the state of the country the way it is? You know, why is relationships and marriage, you know, it's, it's terrible and it's all women's fault. Women just lack accountability. And I say that's completely false. It's men. Women adapt to the environment. Men created an environment where they didn't want to be held accountable. They didn't want to be leaders anymore. They didn't want to be the moral compass in the family. They wanted to live degenerative lives and they wanted to go out there and throw the shackles of religion off. And they abandoned, <clears throat> and they abandoned God being the one who would dictate the direction that they would walk. And they would choose for themselves what would be good and what would be bad, and this is and women and women 
acclimate to the system. This is the system that men create. This is the only way that we're that they're going to thrive. If you are a traditional woman who's got no pictures on Instagram, who isn't going out all day every day, who isn't sleeping around and isn't getting lots of surgery, there's no reward in that. You will never find a date. There's no reward in being a traditional good woman anymore. And so women are this is why women are referred to as chameleons. Why? Because they just adapt. They adapt to their surrounding. They're able to transform themselves into what the environment requires of them. That isn't a negative of women. It's just that they're weak and they have to conform. They conform or they die. And that is the reality. And so it's important to keep in mind where a lot of this came from. I'll leave these two articles linked so that you can read them. There are plethora of information. This actual article is from 2009, uh, talking about the God is Dead movement and how it impacted and changed, and how it impacted and changed marriage. And of course, you have this article talking about the real history of no fault divorce and how men sought to keep women in marriages and where they were just basically not happy in those marriages. And it's important to understand where we came from to understand how we got here. You can't look at how we got here and then just look at the current system of things and be like, well, women are pushing all of this. And it's like, mm, not really. You have to understand why. In any event, I'm going to leave it here. Feel free to leave your comment below. Like and subscribe, and I'll check you next time.